Let's do five, six, and seven. Five is kind of a stray problem. Six and seven look similar, although they're done differently. So fives a definite integral, but aside from that, aside from the fact that we have limits of integration, what this really looks like is integration by parts. X simplifies when you take its derivative. The sine of X has a simple antiderivative. What we should probably do, I mean, there are never guarantees. I've said that many times, but I would wager that this antiderivative is going to be taken using parts. And for the moment, let's just not to worry. <laughs> let's just not to worry about those limits. Let's try to find the indefinite integral u times v negative x times the cosine of x minus the integral of v du. Negative signs can be poured out of integrals, and when this negative sign comes out, it cancels that. And the integral of the cosine is the sine. And now we just, now that we have an indefinite integral, we can find the definite integral using the fundamental theorem. We could just plug these into our calculator, but let's see if I can get this. We plug pi in. The cosine of pi is negative one. So negative pi times negative one positive pi, the sine of pi is zero. When we stick zero in, zero times anything is zero. The sine of zero, is zero, so pi. Six requires a bit of caution. It's a definite integral. It's got division. This could be improper. I mean, it could have a vertical asymptote between negative one and one. 
If you graph this quadratic on your calculator, though, or use the quadratic formula, you'll see that it doesn't. This quadratic is not to zero between negative one and one, so there are no vertical asymptotes, and the improper integral stuff doesn't apply. What we have here is a rational function. And although there are never any guarantees in calculus that one technique will work or another technique won't, we do have a technique specifically designed for rational functions. Functions. That's the partial fraction decomposition. Let me ignore the limits of integration. In fact, let me ignore the integral for a bit. To do a partial fraction decomposition, we need to factor the denominator. So, of course, in the real world, factoring is usually hard by hand, but a test is not the most appropriate place for that kind of realism. This factors easily. 3x negative 2x gives x. 3 times negative 2, negative 6. x times x, x squared. And what the partial fraction decomposition says is that we can write this as the sum of simpler rational functions. And the exact way you do that varies, but we have focused on the case where we have distinct linear terms. And in that case, it's just a constant over the first term, a constant over the second term. And to find this A and this B, we're going to multiply both sides of this equality by this denominator. On the left, we're left with x. On the right, when we multiply this fraction by this denominator, the x plus 3 is cancel, and we get x minus 2. On the right, well, sorry, not on the right, just when we take this fraction and multiply it by this. This time it's the x minus 2 is that cancel, and we get b times x plus 3. And now the heavy side method is to pick the values of x that make these terms zero. To pick x equals 2 and x equals negative 3. And when x equals 2, we get b equals two fifths. And when x is negative three, we 
we get A equals three fifths. So we are integrating, let me see, three fifths over x plus three plus two fifths. over x minus 2. And the point of this is that hopefully these new rational functions will be easier to integrate than the old one was. And that is certainly the case here. And I am running out of room, but the problem is largely done. We stick one in here. We get three fifths the log of four plus two fifths, the log of one. One minus two is negative one, but then we've got these absolute values and that becomes positive one minus three fifths, the log of, let's see, negative one plus three, and the log of two plus two fifths, the log of three. Once again, negative one minus two gives us negative three, but the absolute value makes it positive. And the logarithm of one is zero. If you happen to remember that, you can get rid of that. Otherwise, I don't see much simplification to be done, other than maybe plugging it into a calculator and getting a decimal. These problems you'll have observed are appearing in pairs with a few odd ones out. One and two look similar. Three and four look similar. But even though they look similar, they're done using different techniques. And it's certainly not that I'm trying to trick you, but it is part of mastery of the material to be able to decide which technique to use in different situations and to recognize that problems might look similar but need to be approached differently. Here, I wouldn't say this problem needs to be approached differently. If you use a partial fraction decomposition, you'll get to the correct answer. But, It certainly can be approached differently.
Let's see. U is this quadratic. If we stick one here, we get one plus one is two minus six, negative four. If we plug negative one in here, we get negative one squared is positive one plus negative one is positive two minus six, negative four. And an integral from A to A is always zero. Nope. Sorry about that. I was looking at that and thinking that wasn't the answer I was expecting to get. What mistake did I make? Negative one squared is positive one. I think I somehow turned this into subtraction. 1 plus negative 1 is 0, minus 6 is negative 6. And here's, you know, where it's so important to have these absolute values. Without the absolute value, we'd get errors when we stick these terms in. With them, we get an answer.